Omega Strikers is pretty easy for you to just jump into and start having a good time whacking the core and tossing skills around. But eventually you'll come to a realization that, hey, I'm missing something. Whether it's when you get dunked out of nowhere or someone perfectly maneuvers the core around you, you'll know. And that's what brings you here. Hi, I'm iHeartPie. And while I'm not necessarily the greatest player in the world, not by a long shot, I played quite a bit in the closed beta and I played with some of the top players as well. They taught me some great tips and I'm here to share them with you. But they said in exchange, you have to hit the like and subscribe button down below. Done? Good? All right, let's hop to it. The first tip is to make sure you hit second. When the ball is already moving towards the goal, there is actually no real need for you to hit it. In fact, oftentimes it's worse if you hit it because your strike is now on cooldown and the goalie will just hit it right back past you. Now, if you come from other MOBAs, this might actually seem a little counterintuitive because in most games, you actually want to be the first one to strike. But in this game, because the core gets redirected, the direction is actually dictated by whoever hits it last. Knowing this one fact is actually a very simple but effective way for you to both attack and defend. Now, you might start asking, if I'm the striker, does that mean I lose all the time because I always have to shoot it first? Well, let's move on to the second tip. A skillful follow-up. As I mentioned, strike has a cooldown. Which means if both the shooter and the goalie doesn't mess up the timing, the goalie will have the advantage since they always hit second. Now, the shooter can actually overcome this by using skills. For example, you can see here Estelle using her shard ability after she strikes. This allows the ball to have a second impact immediately after the goalie hits the ball. This gives the goalie very little time to react and the goalie strike will be on cooldown, so it just goes right past them. Now, seeing this, it might look like the striker has the advantage now. Well, let me put your mind at ease with tip number three, the impenetrable wall. Anyone can be goalie, but certain characters are better at goalie than others. Some prime examples being Dubu and Atlas. Their skills create walls to preemptively stop the ball before it even reaches the goal, sometimes blocking multiple skills just using one ability. Multi-hit skills such as Kai's is also very good at stopping multiple skills from strikers using only one ability. It sort of becomes a rhythm-based tug of war where the striker hits, the goalie hits, the striker skill hits, the goalie skill hits, etc, etc. Now it gets a little bit deeper, but obviously it's still a little bit boring if you guys are just bouncing the ball back and forth until one of you guys run out of cooldown. So the next tip I have is to take aim. Many players starting out, myself included, are a straight shooter, always aiming directly forward at the goal. But even though Duwu has eaten a few extra pints of ice cream, he's still not as wide as the entire goal. So get ready for the secret genius tactic, all right? If you're having trouble with the goalie, try aiming where the goalie is not. I know, crazy, right? Your character will always shoot towards where your mouse is when you click. So alternating your shots can be very effective, especially when both you and the goalie are out of skills. This also goes for the goalie as well. Don't just strike the ball back at the striker. Throw it away from them. Using this ability to aim, you can actually take it a bit further with this next tip. Bank shots. Pop quiz. In times like these where you have no other clear shot to the goal and no other choice but to hit the ball, what do you do? Answer, hit it like this. Shooting at a wall and bouncing off is a great way to get an angle you would have otherwise not hit. This is a very advanced strategy and over time you'll probably start seeing some crazy Valorant style lineup guides about it. But for now, just know that it exists and you can try experimenting with it if you want. Who knows, you might get some lucky goals here and there. But there's actually a more realistic approach to this situation, and that's our next tip. Learn to pass. As I mentioned in my video about what makes Omega Strikers great, our brain is oftentimes hard-coded to chase the ball, especially this nice, shiny, bouncy one. And before you get angry at what I'm about to say, sometimes we do need to share. If in the previous situation, your ally was actually free and has an angle, pass it to them for a more guaranteed shot, so long as you trust your teammate anyways. Now, if you're not the type to play well with others, well, the next two tips are actually for you. First, look for quick picks. If you are the more observant type, picking a character with a snipe or a quick dash will help you secure some absolutely free kills whenever someone runs near the wall or the goal. A couple of sneaky moments to look out for. When they go for a ball spawn near the edge. When they try to pick up an orb, more on that later. When the goalie is pressured into the goal. When they are distracted by your teammate or they're risking it by walking around with low stagger. But if careful planning isn't your forte, I got the next tip for you. Harassing their defense. Certain characters absolutely excel at this. X and Drek'nar, for example, have some amazing abilities for chunking out enemies, killing them, or just keeping them away from the ball. 
On the long range side, Eras Tornado, Estelle's Beam, and Luna's Rocket are also great abilities to stun your enemy's defense for that critical half a second when they're about to defend the ball. Players who are gods at this will probably never get the MVP unfortunately, but your win rate will be insane. And if you want to specialize more into this, we have our next tip, which is obvious but has to be said. Make your trainings. Trainings are the passives you choose before you start. There are 5 categories and every character has some must pick colors before branching out. I won't go too deep into this for now, it's way too much to cover here, but just know that these passives can really shape the way you play, and there will probably be a ton of arguments about what build is meta. Do your own research and experiment, and please don't just keep picking the default build because it's easy. Finally, let's talk about the other very important stat boost you can have in this game. Orbs and EXP. You may have noticed this number next to people's names before, or maybe you just keep wondering why they punch you so much harder than you punch them. Well, a large part of that comes from EXP. You can gain EXP in quite a few ways. The main ones being hitting the core, killing enemies, scoring goals, and picking up orbs. You always want to try and grab the orb whenever possible because not only is it a huge EXP boost, you also get a buff on top of it. The buff you get is different every game and you can see what it is at the top left corner during character selection. Being higher level gives you a lot of bonuses like higher speed, stronger knockback power, higher max stagger, and faster cooldowns. So leveling up will really help you steamroll your way through the game. And that's all for now. I'm still trying to get better at the game myself but I hope that these tips helped. If you have any tips to share, feel free to share them down below. I'd love to hear it. And if you want to hear me analyze why Omega Strikers will be one of the biggest games in 2022, click here to watch that video. There'll be more guides coming up in the future, so stay tuned. I'll see you next time. Ciao.